have a very loaded defense, and by then Matt Stafford should be comfortable comfortable in that offense. This might be the two best teams in the NFC going at it late in the season. That's the game I can't wait for. Okay, uh, if by the two best teams in the NFC you mean the second and third best teams after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think you're 100% right. Next, who is going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year? Neek. We're going to stay with those teams. I'm going to go with Trey Lance. Before the draft, I said whoever Kyle Shanahan drafts is going to be going into a perfect situation with a great offensive line, talented playmakers around him, a good defense, and possibly the best offensive mind of this generation. So I'm going to stick by that. I don't think Trey Lance sits on the bench for very long. If he's the player that they expect him to be, he'll be starting very early in the season, putting up big numbers on a, on a um, very successful team. I think Trey Lance is the favorite, in my view, for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, uh, so long as by Trey Lance you mean Zach Wilson, then I completely agree with you. All right, one more. <laughs> you don't believe it. That's just hopeful. <laughs> Speaking of rookie quarterbacks, which week will Mac Jones make his first start for the Patriots? Neek. Oh, yeah, I think that Mac Jones, I think Cam Newton will start off the season, but I think Mac Jones comes in around week five, I think it is, against the Texans. The season starts out pretty rough for uh, the Patriots as far as tough defenses with the Saints and the Dolphins. The Jets aren't as much, but obviously the Buccaneers. I think Cam Newton's experience will help them live through those first four games, but I think Mac Jones, if their record isn't strong, can possibly start against the Texans, who don't have much on defense or offense. That could be the softest landing spot for Mac Jones to start his NFL career. So maybe that's when they put him in. And looking at those numbers, I can't even disagree. Like, I can't even come up with a joke that, <laughs> that is yeah, rooted in any way in reality that would have been funny about suggesting that of those defenses, the Jets are the ones they most need to be worried about, considering their little 2-14 and 14 there stood out a lot. Okay, let's leave that there for the moment. Let's talk about another team. Let's talk about the team that was 1-15. Urban Meyer took them over as the head coach in Jacksonville. And the first few months have been... Very unusual. That's Chris Doyle, who was hired as the director of sports performance despite all the talk about the misconduct when he was at Iowa. That didn't last. He resigned a day after his hiring then last week. Out come the reports that Jacksonville is going to bring in Tim Tebow to play tight end. That set everybody going crazy. Now over this weekend, it comes out that the 25th overall pick, Travis Etienne, is taking reps as a wide receiver during rookie minicamp, despite making his name, of course, as a running back while at Clemson. I, I, I think you could say he, he was the most productive running back in the history of the ACC. <laughs> this seems to have given Marcus a headache. Swagoo, are you all right? No, I'm not. No, no, G. I don't know if you was coming to me first. So if you go into Diana or Foxy first, No, I'm first, coming to you to first. Because I need to process this bull You make crap. that face, okay. we're Listen, coming man. to you. Uh, all right. The, the, damn, Urban. <laughs> like, what are you? First of all, I'm trying to, like, get all my thoughts together. One, okay, if Travis Etienne is going to be a wide receiver in the Jacksonville Jaguars offense, Rashad Bateman went two picks later to the Baltimore Ravens. That's number one. Number two is, what the hell are you drafting for? The dude was the was an elite back at, the, at Clemson. He was a national champion. He did his work out of the backfield. If you were, if it was James Robinson, the running back that you have now, who had a very good year last year, if he's going to be the guy, let him be the guy and go draft a wide receiver. This is crazy. Now, I don't want to go, I don't want to go off the scale and overreact crazy, right? I expect Etienne to be in the backfield. I expect him to use him as a wide receiver at times. But if this dude is going to line up solely in the slot, Urban Meyer going to be on TV with us again over there at Fox <laughs> talking about college football on Saturday morning in 2022. I guarantee it. That's a very interesting art. We, we have staked our claim on that. Diana, what is your sense of what he's doing there yeah. in Jacksonville? Yes, yeah, so doesn't this just reek of an Urban Meyer selection, though, in the draft in terms of a player he wants? And, and that's the truth of it. This wasn't like the ghost of Doug Marone making this pick. This was all... Urban Meyer. This isn't Trent Belke. Yeah. This isn't Dave Caldwell. This is this guy making it, right? Because here's what he likes. Look at all of his offenses, right? He loves that H receiver. He loves the hybrid. He loves being able to, to take running backs and putting in that receiver role. He loves the speed. Anything to really give Trevor Lawrence more options and to try to make this offense as creative as possible. Greeny, I do think the headline is, is way 
saucier than probably what the reality of this will be, right? Because you're thinking, why are you taking such a good running back and changing his position on day one of rookie camp when this kid doesn't even know where the bathroom is at the facility? But I think this is smart of Urban Meyer to just give himself more weapons and, and take advantage of the skill set. And you know the player's going to want to do this, right? Anything to be part of this offense and make them better. So uh, I, I'm not totally against it. I just think it's a little shocking initially until you start realizing this is what Urban does. To, to be clear, going back over his offenses, I, the players I can think of that you're talking about, a guy like Percy Harvin at Florida, a guy like Curtis Samuel yes. at Ohio State. But what those guys weren't, to Swagoo's point, is he the most them. productive running back Travis in the history of the ACC. You just named? Yeah, go ahead, Marcus. He ain't them dudes you just named, G. Like, listen, Percy Harvin, was argu- he was arguably going to be one of the best offensive weapons to ever play in the NFL. And he played some wide receiver in college. Travis Etienne didn't line up at wide receiver at all. At Cl- Y'all go ahead, Foxy. I'm sorry. Go I ahead, mean, that, Foxy. That doesn't, that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean that he can't. So, like, this to me, I, I lean more to Diana. Like, this doesn't make me as concerned for Urban Meyer as anything else. Like, I understand or I don't understand why you drive, draft a running back in that spot, especially when you have a running back on your roster who played well who was not highly drafted. So that just should – kind of reinforce the idea that you don't need to draft running backs that high. The questionable, most questionable thing that Urban Meyer has done so far, I would think, is bring in Tim Tebow. The only reason why this Etienne thing, like, bothers anybody, I think, is because it comes on the heels of the Tebow thing. Like, that makes no sense to me. That's the one that has the players in the locker room asking questions and the coaches on that staff looking around like, what are we doing? Like, that, to me, undermines this team much more than having uh, Etienne run some routes right now. Travis Etienne's been playing yeah. running back his whole yeah. life. He knows how to play running back. D- yeah. the- Go Dom, ahead, Diana. And you know what he's doing with Tim Tebow. You know what he's doing with Tim Tebow, right? He's going to try to make him Taysom Hill. Yes, tight end. He's not making him a tight end. He's going to bring him in. He's going to play quarterback. He's trying to run some of that wildcat. You know that's what he's going to do. It's what Urban Meyer does. It would surprise me if we see Tim Tebow line up at tight end. And talking to people there, by the way, there was a sentiment initially that there's it's no way he's going to make me it if he lined Tebow up, will get Diana. cut. Th- that's what I was going to say. There's a thought that he's going to be end. on this roster okay. come week one. This is where the delay sometimes really winds up biting us directly in the behind. One way or another, the idea that all of a sudden Travis Etienne is a wide receiver and Tim Tebow is a tight end is only possible (laughs) in the mind of Urban Meyer, at least as of this moment. Meanwhile, let me run the bases last night. How about this finish? With two outs in the top of the ninth, Shohei Otani hit a two-run home run to give the Angels a 6-5 lead and ultimately a win over the Red Sox. It's Otani's 12th home run of the season that ties him for the major league lead, he's the most special player in the sport right now. Elsewhere, the Indian Shane Bieber saw his record streak of 20 consecutive starts with eight or more strikeouts come to an end yesterday. He struck out seven, allowed three runs and a 3-2 loss to the Mariners. Meanwhile, in L.A., the Dodgers are going to be without their star Corey Seager for a few weeks at least.